Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between to Overanalyze Adventures, the show where I overanalyze adventure games because it's fun. Now, let's get back to Alum. So, picking up where we left off, Alum has made his way to the Rogation secret base, but he can't get in it, at least not yet. First, he has to solve the puzzle to unlock the door. First, he has to let loose a cute little robot called Gobo. And yes, that name does remind me a lot of the Gobots. That delightful little Transformers knockoff. Anyway, this adorable little box of flicker and light is the key to unlock the door to the Rogation's base. Basically, you use your rush light on some rocks in the surrounded area, and Gobo makes a noise. Alpha, Beta, Delta, or whatever, it's all Greek to me. Basically, you gotta assemble the glowing lights in alphabetical order, and that causes the door to unlock. Interesting, they don't use keys. But nevertheless, you may be thinking now that the rush light is going to become a more intricate part to Alum's puzzle solving. After all, he always carries the Kool-Aid around his neck. I mean, the thing that symbolizes the altruist's love. But anyway, if you think that this rush light thing is going to be more involved with the game's puzzles, you'd be wrong about that. This is one of the few times in the game where the rush light's actually important to solving a puzzle outside of getting people to drink the Kool-Aid, that is. Anyway, speaking of Kool-Aid, let's meet the Rogations. This is terrible. Darling, please. It's all ruined. Kaya, we can't raise our children in this cavern. I understand. Damn it, you won't have to! We're gonna get him back! Why do we need Dashu? We can still go through with the plan. It's what he would want us to do. I'm not doing a thing without Dashu. That's right, girl. Me neither. Perhaps it's best we formulate a new plan, Jakob. Maybe we can free Dashu. Okay, but I think we're wasting our time. Dashu is not a waste of time. He's been leading us with all his heart for years. Oh, Dashu. Arrow, I'm really sorry. We never saw them coming. I would have stayed with them, but I got scared. It's, it's all right, dear. I'm glad you're safe. How did they know we were in Cosmos, anyway? This sucks! Altruist, come on! Help us out! Okay, so to unlock the door, you have to use Gobot in your rush light. But then Gobot also acts as the alarm system to alert the other Rogations. Whoever programmed this thing maybe didn't do a good job. If it can recognize an intruder, but at the same time also let them in. Oh, don't everyone act alert or anything. It's not like you're some sort of terrorist organization wanted by the authorities in Cosmos. Hey, I met him in the arcade. He was worried because the Vague has taken his wife. What was your name again? Alum. Are you... Hold on. You say you met him in Cosmos? He found one of our contact letters and wanted to meet Dashu. I don't trust him. Wow, finally someone with a little bit of sense. He got in through the sealed door. He must have a rush light. I do. Just because he knows the Altramus doesn't mean he listens to him. I like how they have knows and asterisks. It kind of implies something to me. But then again, as I mentioned in the last video, I have a dirty, filthy mind. I take it you're the Rogations. Please, I need your help. We have problems of our own. Explain to us how you got here. All right, I will. I was off to work, like any other day. And now, here I am. His story rings true. I believe him. Okay, welcome to the Rogation. Yes, I know, it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse at this point. But I need to remind you guys, these guys are a terrorist organization wanted by the authorities in Cosmos. Alum magically shows up. Last time he showed up, their leader, Dashu, was captured by the authorities. They hear Alum's sad and probably not very plausible story, if he actually tells the truth. Like, seriously, he fell off the walls of the city and didn't die? I mean, these terrorists have no skepticism, no doubt. They blindly believe anything anybody tells them. They might be the most naive terrorists in fiction. So what now? I'll help you free Dashu however I can. After that, you get me in the cosmos. 
Sounds like a deal. Anyway, now that Alum has been thoroughly vetted by the Rogations, as in he just told him his day, they want him to find some bits to fix a thing they're calling the Mole, which is like a car. So there's cars in this universe too. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, there's everything at this point. It's so anarchistic. It's basically a junkyard of genres at this point. But world building aside, this game... <laughs> well, I still find it incredible that the Rogations are having Alum gather the parts to fix the mole. Considering every Rogation beside the Mr. T lookalike is just standing around pouting. They're doing nothing. I have no idea why they can't assemble the parts to get the mole themselves. You'd think if they have such a crush on Dashu that they'd be more involved in his rescue. But no. No, they're just standing around. Don't believe me? Let's take a look at some of them. Are you okay? I'm worried. Worried for the Rogations. Worried for Dashu. Why does Mr. Glim hate the Rogations so much? Oh right, finally, we get to know our villain's motivations. Because up till now, it hasn't been really clear why Mr. Glim's doing anything he's doing. Other than Alum meeting with Dashu in the sewer, there's really no motivation for Mr. Glim to really hate Alum. And it's not really clear why he doesn't like the Rogations anyway. So hopefully the game will finally explain why Mr. Glim is so evil. He is a coward. He wants to control Cosmos, and he's bowing down to the Umbra. You see, the Ebots were Umbra's plan to begin with. It's all a show. Now, I feel obligated to fill you in on who Umbra is, because the game doesn't really do that at all. Basically, Umbra is a little shadow guy that hangs out with Mr. Glim, and I think he's supposed to be Satan. Anytime the invidious Umbra sees that someone is looking for answers, searching for truth, Looking for a cure to the vague, he sends his lords to attack them. Then the Ebots show up. Supposedly rescuing them. Now their attention should be realigned to see that Mr. Glenn is a great leader. Glenn, good to lie. Thank you. Mr. Glenn cares for you. Have a good day, isn't it? and that they are safe. Thinking if they were to leave Cosmos, the Lords would kill them. I'm glad that Ebok came along. The Lords are dangerous, but nothing compared to the Vague. <gasps> it's Satan. You know, the Lords can't survive around us when we're holding our rushlights. So the Rogations are trying to help free everyone in Cosmos? Exactly. We've been able to sneak in and share our rushlights with people from time to time. But the Ebots are programmed to look for anyone bearing a rushlight. We can't get in and everyone is too afraid to leave. The Vague is just driving people around in its void day in and day out. Now all that's nice. I get the Rogations want to help people. But they still haven't explained why Mr. Glim doesn't like the Rogations and why he's doing what he's doing. Again, our villain has no motivation short of he's hanging out with Satan so he's going to do evil stuff. What do you expect with people who hang out with Satan? Or Satanists in general, I mean. It's not like they would make silly little overanalyzing YouTube videos and uh, oh, I'm getting a little personal now. But seriously, I kind of find it a bit silly. Our villain still has no motivation outside of, yo, Satan. What can we do? We need Dashu back. The altruist has shown Dashu certain things in order to communicate them with us. We have no direction without him. Jesus, that's dumb. Seriously, the altruist can't just tell someone else? It's like, no, 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 I have these carefully laid plans where basically I'm going to tell one dude all the important stuff and, well, I didn't figure he'd get captured. Um... Yeah, I guess I could tell someone else, but you know, everything's set in stone, I'm moving mysterious ways. That's so lame, come on. Seriously, it's like, oh, he's the leader, he's caught. Yeah, we absolutely have to find him because God just really likes him and won't tell anyone else his secret plans. We'll get him back. I pray you do. Anyway, that lady we were talking to was Dashu's wife. I guess it's understandable that she'd be sad that he's gone. Hmm. You know what? There's one interesting little thing about Alum that I've noticed. Nobody seems to be just in a relationship. Like, no one has a boyfriend or girlfriend. Either they're married or they're single. I don't know if I should read into that or not. 
But nevertheless, there's a little quest here to make this lady happy. Basically, you have to meet all the other rogations, and they give you something. And then she, in turn, gives you something to fix the mole. And I do have to give some credit to the developer here. This is a clever way of forcing the players to meet your characters, to interact with them. And I'm not being sarcastic. I'm genuinely saying this is a good idea. It makes, well, learning about these people a necessity to further your progress in the game. So let's meet these other delightful characters. Well, here they are. Here's the Brogations. It's basically four people of ambiguous younger ages, a couple of old people, and a couple of children. This old dude who's just dancing because he gave his mind over to the altruist, and the altruist just wants him to dance. If this was a horror game, that would be terrifying. Think about it. Some old god basically takes an old man and forces him to dance for his amusement. Throw on some bloody feet, have him cry. Ooh, that would be terrifying. But no, this is the good kind of god that really loves you. And actually, these characters really matter. I'm sorry. Well, a couple of them do, but we'll talk about them later. But yeah, pretty much the majority of people in this room, they're meaningless. Except, well, these two little boys right now, we have to talk to them to find a tire because they hit it. Because... They're, I don't know, rapscallions or something? Seriously, terrorism's serious business. They bring their children here, and their children are hiding vital parts for their organization. <sighs> Seriously, worst terrorist group ever. If you can't find us, there's no way you're clever enough to free Deshu from a prison. Fine. It's a deal. After I find you, Bratz, the tire is mine. Yeah! I love this game. Yeah, that's some spotty voice acting right there, game. Yeah, I like this game, guy. Come on. Come on, wise guy. Can we hit the tiger? We can hide anywhere in the whole rotation base. <sighs> Another kid sounds like he's 40. I totally know what the tiger is, but it will not give it to you because I am a youth and I am wild and mischievous. Ah, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. The kids aren't in the game for long. You find them. They give you the tire. Mr. T takes it all very well. You're lucky I love you. Now let's get this thing on! Yeah! Oh, kind of actually creepy, almost like uh, the pedo bear. Nevertheless, there's just one more interesting thing that happens here at this base. That's if you go outside, you meet this lady, who's clearly schizophrenic. Way out of my mind. Please, just come inside. It'll be okay. You can't make me! You can't make me do anything. What was that all about? Her name is Tangler. She has been listening to strange voices. Strange voices? Yes, ever since she was used by a man from Outer Tide. He lied to her and broke her heart. Her spirit is vexed and a double mind has made its way into her life. Can you help her? She stopped listening to me. Now the game never really goes into details about what happened with Tangler, but I'm assuming it was something very traumatic. Now I suppose it's open to interpretation, but it must have been something pretty damn serious, because obviously this woman's in a very bad mental state. And it's interesting too how the altruist acts he's very dismissive he's like yeah her spirit's vexed she's got a double mind oh it really makes me feel bad and yeah she stopped listening to me but i won't do anything about it because you know communication's important in any relationship why should i be the one to make the effort of fixing her considering she doesn't want to talk to me anymore you know i'm just saying like it's all about me basically i mean the altruist is a very selfish and very passive being he doesn't seem proactive at all he's like hey you're not focusing enough attention on me well screw Screw you, you go crazy, I'll be over here and feel sad about it, but you know, hands are tied, you don't want to talk to me. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like this character of the altruist at all. Anyway, we reached a point in the game where Alum's assembled enough of the materials to make the mole work. And you know what the Rogations do? Of course, they just give Alum the mole to save Dashu, their leader. None of the other Rogations come with him because they just blindly trust Alum. I really can't understand this at all it's not like alum's a race car driver a special ops dude it's not like alum has any special skills at all i suppose he's motivated because he has to save his wife but every member of the rogations should be motivated to save their leader dashu 
Hell, why didn't they give the keys to Dashu's wife? Jesus. So, let's put ourselves in the shoes of the Rogations. Your leader is captured. He's imprisoned. You have some vehicle designed to rescue him. This random dude shows up. And you're like, well, golly geez, here's the keys to the mole. Go rescue our leader. We'll just hang out here in our secret base and do nothing. We're all just stand around, being passive, taking after the altruist. Really, there's absolutely no reason explained why none of the rogations are doing anything. I mean, not even like an offhanded answer like, oh, we're fiddling around with computers and handling the technical specs. Or, oh no, we all need to be here because the e-bots are swarming. Gosh darn it, everyone, man your stations. We gotta hack into their mainframes to distract them. Oh no, we can't go out and save Dash you, Alan. We need you. We beseech you. Save Dash you. The rest of us are too busy. But no, that's not the case. They're just existing, hanging out, talking about how awesome the altruist is. <sighs> I mean, seriously, it seems like the only reason, the only logical reason anyway, that they're giving Alum the mole and telling him to rescue Dashu is because he must have a big ass sign above his head that says, Hero of this universe, please just give him free reign to everything. Because there's no logical reason for any of this. It's downright absurd. Maybe it would make some modicum of sense if one of the rogations tagged along with him. But no, they just give him the mole and expect him to rescue their leader and... Oh my god, I... Anyway, you break Dashu out of prison. I'm not going to explain how you have to do it because it's kind of silly. Basically, you have to destroy a couple of robots in convoluted adventure game ways. And then you make your way back to the base and, well, something really interesting happens. I remember you from Cosmos. What are you doing here? I'm here to get you out. I have to get back to the Rogations. Mr. Glim is planning something terrible. That's where we're headed. Let's go. I don't know, Kaya. I just have a bad feeling. It's okay, dear. Our future is in the altruist hands. I know, I know. I just hope Alum shows up with Dashu soon. I'm sure they will be back any time now. Yeah. Wow, that was incredible. I mean, that dude who just died, the little Russian dude, that's that lady's husband. She just watched her husband get exploded. Yeah, 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 that, that, that was pretty unexpected. No! Dash you! What happened? The whole place was wild with explosives! You know, not to make light of such a traumatic and difficult event. I mean, a bunch of characters died that we were just introduced to, who we know nothing about, except they were Rogations, so they're the good guys. And, well, now they're dead. But seriously, all these Rogations were doing was just milling about. You'd think one of them would have noticed the explosives, but then again, they had the most lax security of probably any terrorist group in fiction. I mean, honestly, I'm surprised someone didn't blow them up sooner. Then who are you, Alum? You showed up in Cosmos and I was captured. You somehow found our base and now it's destroyed! Yeah, Dash, you, it's a bit late for that now, isn't it? You should have tried to vet Alum, like, uh, maybe the moment you met him. Instead of now, after the bombs go off. Oh well, live and learn, I suppose. Why would I break you out of prison? Oh, thank God. Dashu, you're all right. Just a minor nitpick here, but I find it a touch confusing that this guy says God instead of the altruist. Maybe it's a throwback to an earlier draft of the story, but the altruist is supposed to be God and Jesus. But then again, there's a separate entity called God. It also exists in this universe. I mean, it seems a little convoluted to me. They've never called the altruist God, so I'm assuming God is something different. So are there multiple deities in this world? Is this like some polytheistic system and the altruist is just one of many? Is there another God? I mean, I know it sounds like I'm nitpicking, but again, you have to realize that the altruist is God and it's Jesus, and this is a Jesus allegory story, but there's also God. It's very confusing, that's all I'm getting at. 
There he is. Get him. Alum just showed up, and now look. Mr. Glim probably let Alum rescue you to make him look like the hero. The perfect alibi. What if he does just want to help his wife? Don't get sentimental, Dashu. He's dangerous. It's Invidious Umbra! There is no reason to keep fighting. Your precious Altruist let this happen. Does he even care? Now, I haven't talked about it much yet, but Alum uses a lot of the cliches you hear certain American Christian organizations parroting. Oh, something bad's happened. Why does God let it happen? But in the case of what's happening right now in the game, that argument makes no sense. If it was an earthquake, sure, I could understand why someone would question why would God allow this to happen. But this was clearly an act done by a human. And it was clearly caused because of the Brogation's own lack of security. They have only themselves to blame. Why would they be blaming God for this? It seems terribly cliched and a bit ham-fisted. Like it's just thrown in there to be like, Oh, let's think about why God challenges us. But that's just my interpretation. Oh no. What have I done? We have been so blind! Did we not listen close enough to the altruist? It's entirely possible that you should have listened to the altruist more. I mean, think about it. Maybe altruist was giving you some really good security advice. You know, telling you how to structure your little criminal organization, telling you how to vet people, how to keep track of people, how to implement proper security so your base doesn't get blown up. It's pretty interesting, too. The altruist, who is normally pretty talkative when things are pretty calm, is keeping his mouth shut. Not even trying to comfort them and being like, Yeah, guys, sorry, your base blew up. Um, I'm moving mysterious ways. Don't worry, they're with me now. Everything's fine. I just find it a bit odd. That's all. They're asking for the altruist. They're calling out to him. And he seems pretty responsive. But now that things are actually kind of serious, he's all quiet. It's like he's cracking under pressure. Or maybe he just feels really weird about the whole grieving thing and he just can't handle it. I don't know, this seems kind of like a dick move on his part. The one time they actually need him, for real, at the one point where they're really grieving and really sad, he can't be bothered to comfort them. I mean, he's, it's kind of a dick move, altruist. Kind of a dick move. I mean, you've talked before, but now, when people actually need some comfort, nowhere to be found. Too busy being a jerk. But yeah. It's very interesting that our characters now are having a little bit of a crisis of faith. It will pass, of course. This is a Christian parable. They'll be like, oh, why God? And then they'll be like, ah, we'll just believe harder and everything will work out. I mean, that's essentially the message here. Our loved ones have been taken home, absent from us, but present with the altruist. They're being satisfied and loved in a greater way than any of us have ever experienced. <laughs> Dirty mind again. Dirty mind again. The altruist promised we would never taste death because of the love we've received from him. Now, they've clearly died, guy. I mean, death is a pretty definitive thing. They're dead. Their bodies have been exploded. And it's impossible for him to lie. Did he tell you that? The altruist. Did he tell you that he can't lie? Again? Why does no one in this universe have any skepticism, any critical thinking? Some deity voice in their head just says, hey, I can't lie. Well, obviously it must be true. I won't try to look into this at all. <sighs> they are alive with him and each other. We will be reunited shortly. Until then, my friends, we'll miss them all dearly. Yeah, despite the blue border, the altruist isn't going to say anything because he's weird at funerals. I mean, he's too busy playing with his new friends that he has up in, I'm guessing, heaven. But either way, after burying their dead and having a little cross because, you know, in case you didn't realize they're all Christians, they decide to take Alum to Cosmos. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Funeral, everything's sad, and yeah, let's carry on with the plot again and get Alum to Cosmos. Which is nice for... Alum, getting back to the whole funeral thing for a second, it's a nice touch to have people explode and die in an adventure game. And I'm not saying that sarcastically, it was very unexpected and really cool. The problem is, though, it lacked pretty much all impact because we just 
met these characters, and then they died. Very suddenly, too, and unexpectedly. No build-up, no character development. They existed briefly, and then they died. And it's all good because they're with the altruist. It just seems like a missed opportunity, that's all. It seems like they could have developed these characters, we could have grown a little bit attached to them before they died. That way their death would have some impact. Instead, it's just something that happens to characters we just met. It's like extras being mowed down in the background of an action movie. Sure, it's visually stunning, but it doesn't mean anything. Oh well. I've been rambling now. Let's go ahead and end this video. And I've been some guy. This has been Overanalyzed Adventures. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, bye bye.